Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us at First Tuesdays. Uh, if you have and already let us know uh, if you could tell us where you uh, come from. Uh, we do this for statistical purposes. Uh, you can just put your city if, or state if you're not comfortable putting your city. And uh, this morning, we're lucky to have uh, Zaki uh, Abdelhamid. Uh, he's been involved in community programming and organizing for most of his professional career, currently serving as the program manager for Humanities Washington. An Arab immigrant from Jordan, he received his bachelor's in theater from the University at Albany and a master of fine arts in acting from the University of Delaware. A Seattle resident since 2003, he is very proud to serve his community through Humanities Washington. And uh, I'm going to let you take it away, Zeki. And uh, as Jeremy mentioned, he will be presenting his program in three parts and will be uh, taking questions and answers after each section. Uh, so take it away. Thanks, uh, I Becky. apologize. I'm going to jump in here real quick. We do have a couple more pieces. Facilitators oh. today. Actually, our <laughs> facilitators, uh, our standard facilitators are not here today. We have Diane Hutchins. Thank you very much, Diane, for being You're here welcome. today. And technical support. Uh, Joe had some other business this morning, but you do have me, Jeremy Stroud. If you have any difficulties with the session, either audio or chat not appearing, stuff like that, uh, please feel free to send me an email. I will be more than happy to assist you. Uh, I'll go ahead and type my email address into the chat box here in a moment. Uh, we are brought to you by the Secretary of State's office and the Institute of Museum and Library Services through the LSTA uh, Act funds. I believe a number of individuals have already given us their library organiz uh, or organization or city. If you could please type that in if you haven't yet, that'd be great. And going on, here we go. Zeki, I'm handing it off to you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you all very much. Uh, I just want to start out by uh, saying go Hawks. And with that, we will start our presentation. Uh, so uh, as you know, my name is Zeki Abdelhamid. I'm from Humanities Washington. Just a really quick background on who we are. We are a private uh, non-for-profit organization that's dedicated to sparking conversation and critical thinking uh, using story as a catalyst. We have programs uh, all across the state. We are based in Seattle, but most of our programming uh, actually happens outside of the city. Uh, we have several programs uh, uh, to serve the state, and I'm going to be talking about a few of them uh, today that will pertain uh, to uh, libraries especially, but a lot of other nonprofit organizations. Um, and uh, as Jeremy said, I'm going to be talking about uh, about four different programs actually and uh, we'll take questions after each one. Um, some of these programs I am directly involved with and some I am not so uh, some I'll have a, a more information for you than others. But uh, I will start with the Speakers Bureau which is uh, a program that I'm directly in charge of. Uh, so the Speakers Bureau is one of our oldest and most popular programs. Uh, we have a roster of 29 speakers. They're cultural experts, scholars, and they provide low-cost, high-quality public presentations across the state. Uh, what they do, they encourage audiences to think, learn, engage, and conversation. Uh, so these 29 speakers that we have currently have topics, uh, several topics that they speak about. Uh, as you can see on your screen, these are just a few uh, of these topics, civic, contemporary pop culture, environment, we have ethics, film, history, literature, music. Uh, later on, I, I will uh, take you to the website so you can explore all of these presentations and see what they are and we'll also talk about how to book these speakers but really quickly I can just give you a couple of examples um, uh, about, who, uh, about some of these uh, presentations. Uh, for instance, Tom Keogh is one of our speakers. He has a presentation called Dr. Doyle and Mr. Holmes, The Cultural Staying Power of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, and we have uh, uh, also, for instance, uh, John Marshall, who presents on fire and forests east, east of the Cascade Divide. Uh, and so anyway, I'm not going to go through them all. There are several, but um, uh, just one more, for instance, Lance Rhodes speaks about the American Indians in cinema, portrayals and participation on screen and behind the scene. As I said, I will uh, take you to the website so you can explore all of these uh, to see uh, who they are and what they have to offer. Uh, in the 
2013, actually before I go here, I just want to say that these presentations are usually about an hour long, an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, uh, so they used to have this format of 45 minute presentation followed by a little bit of a Q&A. We're trying to change that a little bit. We're trying to have the, con the speakers engage the audience in conversation throughout the, the, the hour or hour 15 minutes or, or how, however how, how much time we have. Uh, but, but, but the, uh, the goal is to really just to spark conversation and critical thinking with the people in the room. So as I said, about an hour, an hour 15, some go to about an hour and a half, uh, but that's uh, kind of the format. So in 2013, we had 232 presentations. We had over 10,000 people that we had served in 28 counties. Um, we are definitely looking this year to serve the counties, the 10 counties that we missed last year, uh, those are Adams, Columbia, Ferry, Garfield, Klickitat, Lincoln, Pacific, Ponderé, Skamania, Stevens, and Wakayakum. Uh, if you uh, are from an organization in any of those 10 counties, uh, please uh, get in touch with me because we would love to get our speakers in these counties to, because uh, we believe they are underserved. Uh, and at the end of the presentation, you'll have all of my info so you can get in touch with me. Uh, so how does it work and how much uh, does it cost? So uh, here's how the program works. We'll take it step by step. Uh, first of all, you would go to the website, you review uh, the list of the speakers, and you would decide which one you would like to host. Uh, let's say you say you wanted Tom Keogh, then you would just uh, email or call me. Um, uh, so you can either email me at this speakers at humanities.org or this phone number. Again, later on I will give you that info as well as well uh, as my personal email address. Um, so who is eligible to book these presentations? So if you are from the library, obviously you're eligible because it has to be a nonprofit organization like a library, historical society, museum, uh, social service organization, or community center. Uh, we also do things in a school, a college, or university. Um, you have to make your speakers be your event free and open to the public. Um, I believe that is the, the, the absolute uh, uh, one rule that we have to follow. It has to be free, it has to be open to the public. Um, and then allow at least one hour for each presentation, including sufficient time for conversation. As I mentioned, sometimes they go over an hour, hour 15, hour and a half. That is, that is something that you can talk with the speaker themselves just to, kind of, to agree on w how much time you're going to allow them. Uh, you have to generate publicity for the program and secure an audience of at least 30 people. Now, we say 30 people, but we realize that different communities have different needs. Uh, if you are in a big city, uh, that 30, that number should stand. Sometimes we could be in a rural area where 15 people can be considered a big success. We're definitely kind of flexible on that, uh, but we want to have as many people as possible see this presentation. Uh, then if the organization is eligible and the funding is available, uh, you'll be given the contact info to the speaker. Uh, then you would contact that speaker to arrange uh, the, the appearance and their participation and talk about any kind of details. Now, we cover the speaker's uh, uh, the speaking fees, uh, but the travel fees are the host, host organization's responsibility. That is something that you would talk over with the speaker. Usually. We're talking about mileage, uh, cost for mileage. Uh, but sometimes, if it's in a very far off area or from where the speaker lives, if the speaker is from Seattle, and uh, let's say it's in you know Tri Cities or in Spokane or something like that, uh, and they want to stay overnight, then that might be something that you would be negotiating with the speaker about housing them or giving them a hotel room or something like that. But usually we're talking about mileage. Uh, uh, but then again, you could also look at a speaker that lives close to your area. Uh, and that way, that travel cost will be minimal. Uh, so you would discuss these with the speaker in advance, and uh, you would also uh, uh, talk with them about what kind of equipment that they will need. Uh, once the the the, uh, the uh, all the details are confirmed, there is uh, an online application that we require that people fill out. Uh, we require that they fill it out at least six weeks before the presentation date. However, uh, we have a couple of interesting things going on this year. One, our funding is not as much as it was last year, so we're running out of these uh, pretty fast for uh, 2013. 
but in 20, I mean 2014, in 2015 we're moving to a different model where it's a grant cycle. Uh, we will have deadlines, four deadlines during the year and we will gather up all the applications, we'll review them all and then we will allocate uh, the presentations uh, uh, according to the, the strongest application. So right now anybody can fill out an application uh, a, a, a six weeks prior and then we would see if, uh, if we uh, approve it or not. Uh, but starting in 2015 that will change when we were to have four uh, specific deadlines where people can submit. So there will be a deadline in the fall of this year for the first quarter of 2015 for instance and so on. Um, so once the application is processed, we'll provide you further instructions, uh, including a toolkit to help you promote the event. I'll give you a f couple of examples of what that toolkit has. Uh, there's a poster in there. There's a, a, a sample press release that you could use. Uh, there's a sample letter to your representatives that you could use as well. Uh, we provide you with a logo uh, and so forth. And I'll give you an example of uh, that poster in just a little bit. Uh, after the event, uh, we uh, require just ask that you reimburse the speaker for the travel expenses and we have evaluation materials that we'd like uh, you to fill out. There are two evaluation materials. There's one that the hosts themselves would fill out just telling us how everything went and we also uh, ask that you pass out evaluation forms to the audience members and then collect them and send them back to us. What we do, we gather all that information and that really helps us move forward and see what we can improve upon uh, uh, in the future. Uh, this is just a, a little bit of traveling and, and, and lodging guidelines. Uh, uh, these are all just suggested mileage uh, traveled. Uh, we recommend using the federal standard, which is right now 56.5 cents per mile. Uh, this could be car rental fees, could be airfare, which is really rare actually, uh, uh, meals during the visit, uh, so maybe ferry tickets, overnight accommodations. This is just a few examples of what you might encounter, but it depends on where you are and where the speaker lives. Uh, this is what we provide. Uh, uh, we have a, a poster uh, that you can uh, print out. Uh, we give you our logo that we ask that you include on promotional materials. We have a sample press release, a suggested script for introducing the speaker, uh, an audience evaluation form, and a sample invitation to your state representatives and senators. Uh, all of that uh, is given to you by, with an email, so that's how the toolkit gets to you. Uh, this is an example of uh, the, the poster that we do. I know a lot of libraries uh, like to do their own posters, which is perfectly fine. This is just a, a mere suggestion that we do. Uh, some, if you don't have the time to put something like this together, we provide it for you. If you want to take something and, and, and uh, design your own poster, that is also perfectly fine. But this is just an example of what this poster looks like. This is one of our uh, most popular speakers, actually, Harriet Baskus, uh, and she has a great uh, uh, presentation about uh, museums and hidden treasures in museums. So what you, uh, the artifacts that, that are in the back room that the museums don't put out front and the stories behind them. Absolutely fascinating presentation. Uh, this is a list of speakers. Uh, you can go to our website, which is humanities.org, uh, and uh, then if you go to programs, speakers, and current speakers, you, you will uh, be able to uh, see everybody that we have there. Uh, this is uh, just a screenshot of our website. Uh, this is the calendar. If you just go there and you can see the calendar right now highlighted in orange, uh, if you go to humanities.org and you click on the calendar, you'll be able to see uh, all of these uh, uh, events that we have, not just Speakers Bureau, but really everything that we have. Uh, and uh, you know, I would suggest if you're curious about this program, you can go and see one of these presentations, see what it's like, and then maybe decide if you'd like to bring this to your organization. Uh, the new roster for 2015 or 2016. Uh, every two years, we refresh the roster. So if you go to check out the, the list of speakers that we have, these folks are going to be with us until the end of this year, 2014. Uh, however, in just a couple of months, I will begin the recruitment process for a brand new roster of speakers that will start uh, at the beginning of 2015 and stay with us for the next two years. So. 
what we will do, we will have uh, an announcement that we will uh, put out through our email list and uh, we'll have a press release and we'll get it to every, all of our partners, everybody we've worked with in the past couple of years uh, because we're going to be looking for new speakers. Uh, uh, so what we ask if you know of any speakers that you think might fit this program, that you direct them to the application so they can fill out an application and be considered to become a speaker. Now, we have, uh, we get a lot of applications. Last year we got over 100 applications um, and uh, 29 people ended up being on the roster. So it's a very competitive process. It begins with an application. Uh, then uh, there's a statewide committee that I put, uh, uh, that I form. They look at the applications and have make their recommendations for which ones are to move on to the audition round. The audition round is really just simply uh, 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 there's a committee that watches a uh, part of the presentation and then has an interview with that speaker uh, so just so we can get to know them and make sure that they are right for the program. Last year we had over about 53 people that came and auditioned and, uh, and uh, as I said 29 people end up making the roster. This year uh, we will start this uh, process next, uh, in April or actually in March. Uh, the auditions will be in June. They will be in Moses Lake and in Everett, uh, so the eastern and the western part of the state. Um, and then the, in the fall, we'll make uh, our, our we'll release the new roster and we'll begin the process all over again. Uh, so definitely, the, you know, look out for this information because we uh, and if you know of somebody, you know, please you know give me a call or, or email me, uh, uh, and I'll be happy to give you all that information uh, to to pass on to the speaker, but we are looking for new speakers to start in the next cycle. Uh, okay, great. So uh, at this point, uh, before I move on to uh, Spark, which is uh, our magazine, I want to see if anybody has any questions about the Speakers Bureau. And feel free to type in the chat, or you can raise your hand. We can call on you in order for using the microphone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, in that case, I, I can just move on with uh, with this. But if you have a question later on, just uh, uh, as uh, raise your hand, or just type it in, and and we'll. Uh, definitely get to it. So I want to talk about this magazine, uh, uh, Spark Magazine. So uh, Spark Magazine is put out twice yearly uh, by uh, Humans Washington. It includes stories on humanities programs and events all around the state. Our first issue, which is, and you're seeing the cover right now, was put out last fall. Uh, it included a short story by Garth Stein, uh, an interview with Speakers Bureau, presenter Antonio Davidson Gomez, and also the previous state poet laureate Kathleen Flanagan. Our next issue is going to include a profile of the primetime family reading program, which I will talk about uh, momentarily. Uh, that was also will include stories about the traveling exhibit that we have, Hope in Hard Times, Washington during the Great Depression. Uh, which is going to be at the Spokane County Library this spring. We will include an interview with Speakers Bureau uh, presenter Robert Horton and a profile of the new Poet Laureate, which I will also talk about uh, momentarily. Uh, currently, we have 36 libraries around the state that carry free stacks in their sites. Uh, and of course, we're very appreciative of that. We're always looking for more sites to distribute the magazine to. So if you are interested in keeping a stack in your library, I'll give you the contact information for that uh, specific person so she could uh, uh, go ahead and provide you with that. But uh, it's, you know, it's about 40 or so pages, a uh, free magazine. Uh, if you want to put it out in your library, uh, we would love it if you would do that. Uh, we would be happy to send you uh, uh, stacks of that in the mail, uh, obviously uh, free of charge. But they have this really some terrific content. Uh, so this is the email address or the phone number uh, to reach our communications officer, Abby Reinhardt. Uh, she will be more than happy to provide you with the magazine. As I said, the new one comes out later this month, uh, so it should be very exciting. So that's her email address right there. If you want to note that, abby at humanities.org, uh, and there's her phone number uh, to a 6682. Uh, 1770 and extension 108. Uh, so that is our uh, uh, magazine, which we call uh, Spark. 
Uh, we also have sparkmag.org, uh, which is uh, associated with the magazine, but it's a little different, and it's a little different because it is a blog. Uh, and it has both news and uh, also more magazine-style feature articles. Uh, if you go to our website, which is humanities.org, you go there for detailed information on our programs, how to partner with us, etc. The blog is more for the general public, to get them interested in and excited about the work that we and our partners are doing. Uh, uh, weekly, we put up a list of upcoming events. Uh, we also post interviews with uh, Speakers Bureau presenters, um, uh, in the field stories, uh, which spotlights grant funded events and other programs. Uh, new, we also have news on programs like uh, Think and Drink and, and, and more. Uh, right now, we're doing a series called 40 Years of Washington Stories, which is celebrating our 40th anniversary with stories from humanities Washington's past work. Um, and uh, as you just uh, as you just mentioned, this is our 40th anniversary. So this uh, uh, the series that we're doing is really fantastic. It's got some great great content there. Uh, so here is the address, which is sparkmag.org. Uh, and uh, don't uh, don't do the mistake and put .com because I did that once and it took me to a car site and it had nothing to do with us or the humanities. But so it's sparkmag.org. Uh, you can go and, and, and check that out. We also have something called Spark 5. Spark 5 is our monthly email newsletter. And that uh, goes out to over 4,000 subscribers all around the state. Uh, it features uh, every uh, every month. You will feature five short stories of interest designed to be easily digestible. Uh, if you want to subscribe to that, all you have to do is go to our website, which is humanities.org, uh, then slash sign up. There it is again, uh, humanities.org slash uh, sign up. Uh, if you go there every month, you'll get just one email from us, and it'll include uh, some really terrific uh, stories. Uh, and uh, Anyway, yes. Um, great. And this is a screenshot right here of uh, sparkmag.org. Uh, this one uh, happens to be Five Questions with Scholar Lance Rhodes and the Historic Impact of Native Americans in Cinema. Uh, so that's just a screenshot to see, uh, for you to see what it's like. Uh, great. Before I move on, uh, is there, are there any questions about the magazine, the blog, or the monthly email? Okay, uh, then we will move on to the Poet Laureate program. Um, so this year we're very uh, happy and proud to announce that Elizabeth Austin has been appointed the 2014 to the to, uh, 16 Washington State Poet Laureate, which is effective February 1st. Uh, Elizabeth Austin is a Seattle resident. Uh, she will be the third uh, s uh, state Poet Laureate. Her appointment is sponsored by the Humanities Washington, obviously, that's us, uh, the Washington State Arts Commission, with also support from Governor Jay Inslee. Uh, Austin will give her first reading uh, as a Poet Laureate with the 2012 to 14 Washington State Poet Laureate Kathleen Flanagan uh, at Open Books in Seattle, February 16th. So. Uh, uh, coming up on February 16th, uh, it's going to be the past Poet Laureate, which is Kathleen Flanagan, the current one, Elizabeth Austin, they're going to give uh, a reading together. Uh, so that would be double the fun. I, uh, if you are in the Seattle area, I, I highly suggest you go there. It is uh, at a place called Open Books. Uh, as the state poet laureate, Austin will build awareness and appreciation of poetry, including the state's legacy of poetry, through public readings, workshops, lectures, presentations in communities, schools, colleges, universities, and other public settings in geographically diverse areas of the state. This is very similar to uh, uh, Speakers Bureau, actually, in terms of who uh, or, or which organizations host the Poet Laureate are very similar to the organizations that host Speakers Bureau presenters. Um, so in this role, uh, Elizabeth Austin will serve a two-year term as the primary spokesperson, supporter, and promoter of poetry in Washington. She will receive a, a stipend from us of $10,000 per year to help her cover the cost of providing poetry programs and activities statewide. So again, this is a program that is essentially free to you if you choose to host her. Uh, this is If you want to do a, a poetry workshop, you want to have the State Poet Laureate at your organization, a library, 
uh, the, the, this um, I highly suggest getting into contact with her and I will give you that contact information in just a second um, and then you could just arrange her appearance uh, at uh, your organization. Elizabeth Austin is the author of a collection uh, called Every Dress a Decision. Uh, she also has two chapbooks, uh, The Girl Who Goes Alone and Where Currents Meet. Uh, she provides literary programming also for KUOW Radio, which is the Seattle NPR affiliate and is a communications specialist and educator at Seattle's Children's Hospital. Uh, this is a picture here of our poet laureate. Uh, and this is the email address to get in touch with her. Uh, if you want to arrange for her to, to uh, have a, a workshop or a presentation at your organization, just uh, email her at poet at humanities.org and uh, you will work directly with her on uh, figuring out all the details for her appearance. Uh, great. Any questions before I move on to uh, the final program that I want to talk about? Okay. Uh, right. We will move on to a program that is uh, right now strictly for libraries called Prime Time Family Reading Time. This is this is a, uh, a a program that actually came out of Louisiana, the Louisiana Humanities Council, uh, and it, several states have adopted it, and we are one of them. Prime Time is a program that uses reading, storytelling, and discussion to explore the cultural and ethical themes presented in children's literature. Prime Time emphasizes the importance of families reading together and creates long-term library users. Uh, so. It, what, it, what is Prime Time? It's a unique outcomes-based family literacy curriculum that engages underserved audiences, particularly low-income and low-literacy families, in the exploration of the humanities. Prime Time goes beyond teaching basic reading skills to address the next steps in literacy education, which are interpretation, understanding, and the ability to interact with others around themes presented in books. The program nurtures family connections through reading and discussions, uh, strengthens the literacy and communication skills of child and adult participants alike. Uh, by holding prime time sessions in local libraries, we encourage familiarity with and frequent use of libraries by low-income families. So. And the way it works is uh, families are recruited from local communities to participate in six weekly nine 90 minute sessions. That's six weekly 90 minute sessions. Uh, so once a week, 90 minutes uh, for six weeks. Uh, held at public libraries. Humanities Washington sets up what we call site teams. At each library, uh, these teams consist of a local librarian, a professional storyteller, a university scholar, and a community organizer who work uh, collaboratively to deliver the program. The librarian helps with recruitment and oversight of the local site team members. The community organizer works with the library staff to coordinate logistics, uh, promote the program in the community, recruit families to participate, coordinate supportive resources such as transportation and food, and provide follow-up uh, with the participant families to ensure that they actually attend. Local social uh, service professionals and schools assist with family recruitment, helping to promote the program to clients and even identify families with particular needs. Now, in each of the six meetings during a session, three illustrated children's books are read and discussed with uh, the participants, which are parents and, and, and children together. At the weekly meetings, the storyteller models read aloud and storytelling techniques for the parents and guardians, uh, and then the scholar engages the participants in discussions around themes, uh, such as fairness or greed or courage. They're, all of these themes are represented in the curriculum book choices. Uh, each weekly session also includes uh, something we call a library commercial, uh, during which the library staff uh, let uh, parents and guardians know about how uh, about the library resources available to them, such as classes, computer rooms, etc. And a public librarian um, is on hand to register participants for library cards and to promote library resources. 
so that is, is kind of uh, how it works. There are six weeks, uh, uh, families uh, that are recruited show up uh, once uh, every, uh, every week for 90 minutes. There's uh, three stories that are read aloud, um, and the scholar leads everybody in the room, the children and their parents, uh, uh, in a discussion about the themes of that book. And uh, they also kind of teach the parents how to engage with their children in reading at home. Uh, they are given books to take home with them, and they come back, uh, hopefully having practiced uh, reading with their children. So it's an absolutely terrific, terrific program. Uh, and. Uh, we have, uh, last year we did it in uh, a few sites uh, around the state, and we are expanding uh, this year to uh, even more uh, uh, sites. Uh, now, this uh, program is not one of uh, my programs. Obviously, I've been to it uh, a couple of times, and I've seen it in action. I think it's fantastic. Uh, but somebody else on staff is, is in charge of that. So if you are interested in, in, in working with a program like this, uh, all you have to do is call a uh, uh, our program director, Ellen Terry, uh, and here is her phone number and email address on the screen right now. Uh, so if you want to just uh, jot that down, uh, yeah, give her a call or send her an email, and she'll be happy to kind of lead you through what it takes to, uh, uh, to be, uh, to be uh, a host organization for this. Um, I think I have a question here. How many families participate in a series? Great question. Uh, I, use, I, I think the, the average um, is uh, about, I want to say, between 15 and 20 families. Uh, that, at least that's the, the, the one that I saw in Shoreline. That's how many families were there. Uh, but so I, I don't think there is a limit uh, on it. it. It just kind of depends on how many people that the community organizer uh, in the library can put together. But I think the one I saw in Shoreline had about somewhere between 15 and 20 families, and each family had either one or two kids. Some had three. So you can see the room kind of fills up. Uh, great. Uh, so any other questions at this point on any of the programs that I presented on? Uh, the target age uh, for the children. We have a question here. What is the target age uh, for the children? Uh, the target age, uh, we're talking uh, 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 grade school. Um, so usually between 6 and 12. Are there any other questions? Uh, over here, I'm um, putting up my uh, phone number and my email address. So there's my phone number, 206-682-1770, uh, extension 102, uh, and my email, zeki at humanities.org. Uh, please feel free to call me or email me with any questions about anything that I've talked about today, uh, uh, specifically the Speakers Beer program, because that is my program, and I'll be able to, to help you out with that. Um, and as I said, we are recruiting for a new roster. So uh, I would love it if you would email me uh, if you know somebody that might be uh, 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 somebody that might be appropriate for that program. Uh, and speaking of that, I would like to just uh, take you right now uh, on a little the uh, web tour here uh, to the page where all the speakers are listed and kind of leave you with that. All right, let's just wait for it to load. There we go. We got this is our website here, so if you go under programs and you go to speakers bureau.
and this is the Speakers Bureau page, Current Speakers. This ha right here has all of the speakers. Some of them have more than one presentation. Uh, uh, as you can, like Hank Kramer, for instance, has two. One is, is called uh, One Trail, Many Voices, Songs of the Oregon Trail. And he also has one called Through a Soldier's Eyes, Wilson Kramer's Civil War. Uh, uh, so uh, this is a list of all of our speakers. If you click on uh, any of them, for instance, if you click on the first one, Eva Abram, uh, which which has a presentation called Slavery in the Northwest, the Charles Mitchell story. You can read about that. You can read about her. Uh, and if you scroll down, there's a little uh, 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 video, which is about a minute and a half uh, of her really explaining uh, her uh, presentation. Uh, the good thing about the video is you get a sense of her presentation style. Uh, so we have as a 20 29 uh, speakers here. Um, uh, so feel free to explore that, take a look around. Uh, so I mentioned this before because of our funding is not as great as it was last year. Um, we don't have a whole lot of presentations left uh, for this year. A lot of them have been booked already. Uh, but there are a few left. We are targeting rural areas um, uh, as well, uh, especially those counties that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so if you want to, uh, uh, or if you're interested in hosting somebody, just take a look here and uh, give me a call or shoot me an email, and we will go from there. Uh, so if uh, there aren't any other questions, I would just kind of leave you here to explore the website a little bit, um, and, and just to, and uh, we'll end it there. Well, thank you, uh, Zeki, for a very interesting program and uh, telling us about all these resources that will be very useful for libraries. Uh, really appreciate your coming today and uh, sharing with us. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. All right. Well, yes, thank you. Um, any final questions from anybody out there? Um, I'm definitely interested in checking out some more Humanities Watch. I've already seen a couple of sessions in the past. Uh, and I think we've actually had some Humanities Washington um, speakers, or at least program um, administrators here on First Tuesdays before as well. Uh, but any final questions before we close out? And uh, thank you again, Zeki, for all your assistance and uh, your presentation here. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And uh, go Hawks. <laughs> go Hawks. <laughs>